Coming up in this FinCast, how these fish are saving trees. I use the Kimapir Elite and uh, Nuvo 16 and, you know, a couple teaspoons on each, in a bag on each side and change it out like once a month and it just keeps everything pure and clean, no phosphates, everything's good to go. Uh, it's pretty much a worry-free system because of the Kimapir. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I want to talk about Project Piaba. Interesting concept and it's a it's basically the idea that buying fish that are caught from the wild, especially freshwater fish, are better than buying fish that are raised in captivity or aquacultured in the United States or some other country. Now why would that be? Well according to uh, the researchers who've been looking at Project Piaba, working on Project Piaba in Brazil, the idea is that it is better to allow the fishermen who are working there to catch the fish and then sell them to people in the United States. Now this is contrary to what you may have heard about the saltwater fishery. In saltwater the thinking goes something like this. If you take something out of the ocean then you are robbing the ocean. So if you take a coral off the reef, if you take a fish off the reef, if you take a, a shrimp off the reef, then that's, a, then that's an organism that's not in the ocean anymore and there is, there's a certain group of people out there that think that that's bad. Uh, if you look at sustainable fishing practices and you look at people who do this responsibly, uh, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that that's not a problem. But in the meantime, there's been a lot of effort to aquaculture fish and raise saltwater fish in captivity, which is quite difficult. Uh, but there has been some movement in that direction. And so that has helped a little bit to, uh, to work against that argument. And now you're seeing a lot of maricultured and aquacultured corals as well. However, there's an emerging thought on the freshwater side that it's actually better to take the wild fish out of the rivers, especially when we talk about the, the Amazon River Basin and that sort of thing, because the fish are so plentiful that there's no way that the small amount of fishing could ever impact the populations. Now, when you go beyond that, what you find is that there's the human element to all of this, and that's really where Project Piaba gets its traction, because the thinking is, is that these fishermen need to have a way to make a living. And the researchers have found that they can catch all the fish they want. The very best thing that companies in the United States can do is to support these fishermen. At any rate, this aquarium was set up at Global Pet and it said specifically Project Piaba and there were some fish in there, some rummy nose tetra, tetras and some other fish. Uh, and I talked to the folks at Seagrist Farms about why they continue to support this research. The Brazilian cardinal is a little bit smaller. Uh, in my personal opinion, it's got a little bit better, better color. It's a little bit more vibrant. Um, at the moment, we really want to support the fishermen there because if we don't put money back in their pockets through their fishery, uh, they're going to wind up going out and getting jobs in, in, in more destructive areas. Um, there's a lot of projects, potential projects, to dam up a lot of the rivers there. Um, they might go into uh, deforestation. Um, so what we're trying to do is really support the local fisheries there, support the fishermen so that they can maintain the jobs that their families have been doing for generations and generations. Um, the whole slogan for Project Piaba is buy a fish, save a tree. So we, we, we thoroughly support that concept. The connection basically is, it, it, it's very easy, I shouldn't say it's very easy, but there's a lot more job opportunity here in the United States, so people tend to not un understand that in a, in a place like uh, uh, Manaus, if, if you're not fishing, then you're probably working for a company that's, you know, working in deforestation. So they, they, they may stop fishing, but then they may start cutting down trees as, a, as an, an, another job. One, this, is, this is a small family of fishermen. Uh, they alone are not going to overfish these, these fisheries. Um, and we do still do a lot, of, a lot of captive raising of these species, and that helps kind of balance it out. Um, there's also some seasonality issues with some of these fish that our, our local farmers help kind of make sure that the supply remains consistent throughout the year. Um, but you have to remember that these aren't real large companies that are fishing these fish. It's just, it's just families. So really the, the concept of them overfishing these fisheries is really overly abstract and just not really a possibility. And they hop in their canoe and they just use uh, what we call sang nets and they just drag it across the river and, and collect these fish, you know, uh, 10 at a time, 20 at a time, 100 at a time. So it's a pretty labor intensive process. Um, but again, it's what their families have done for generations. In most cases, that's all they know. Uh, uh, well, Seagrass supports it because as we said, we, we, we definitely want to keep these guys from 
uh, getting into lines of work that are going to be you know, harmful to the environment. And if we support them in doing a sustainable fishing practice, then we know that they're not going to start looking for jobs that are uh, basically going to be detrimental to, to, to the planet or detrimental to the local environment. Now, to my knowledge, there's no way to know when you walk into a pet store whether you're buying a wild-caught fish or whether you're buying something that was aquacultured in the United States. You might even have to ask for that. Uh, but the important thing is, is if you're in the aquarium hobby and you've been here for a while, it's something new to think about. If you're just entering the aquarium hobby, you just might want to realize that this issue is, is kind of out there and it's kind of dangling. Uh, and But this is a new way of thinking because it's always been better, it's always been thought that it was better to, well, go get the fish, bring it to the United States, figure out how to get it to reproduce and then sell those in large numbers the price comes down from a consumer standpoint you want to pay less for the fish we understand that but if you had to pay two dollars and fifty cents for a tetra that was wild caught versus a dollar and fifty cents uh, for for a fish that was aquacultured in the united states you might want to consider that it would be better to buy the wild caught fish because what you ultimately might be doing would be helping the rainforest so that's just one way to think about it so we wanted to raise a little bit of an issue in this fincast i hope that was something that you found enlightening we appreciate the industry's support of these uh, fishermen who are out there literally with their families and dug out canoes uh, in the rainforest, uh, and it's just a new way to think about the aquarium hobby. So I appreciate you listening, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.